year, with those in their 40s and 50s suffering the most. News Center begins now. Good evening to our viewers in Asia and hello to others watching from around the world. Welcome to Arirang News Center. I'm Noaram in Seoul. And I'm Han Dan. Thanks for joining us. The South Korean government says it'll draw up a supplementary budget this month to try and solve the fine dust problem and breathe life into the slowing economy. Seoul plans to submit a proposal to the National Assembly in the coming weeks. Arirang's National Assembly correspondent Kim Min-ji starts us off. A supplementary budget is in the works. During a meeting between the ruling Democratic Party, the government and the Blue House on Tuesday, the three sides agreed on the need for an extra budget to address fine dust pollution and the slowing economy. While we'll actively prepare for the extra budget, the parliament has passed a number of bills related to fine dust pollution, which has allowed us to take new measures to address the issue. The IMF has proposed that South Korea draw up a supplementary budget citing downside factors. We will take all this into account. The government plans to increase infrastructure that can measure and monitor fine dust levels, as well as come up with ways to reduce emissions. Another portion will be set aside to tackle downside economic risks. The officials noted that international organizations have slashed their global growth forecasts, while the country's exports and investments have been slowing in the past couple of months. Although some economic data shows improvements, there are still areas of concern, like exports or industrial output. The government needs to put in all efforts to revitalize the economy. We will make all efforts to support key manufacturers that are in the midst of a slowdown. The participants also discussed ways to provide assistance to the southeastern city of Pohang that was hit by a 5.4 magnitude earthquake in 2017, causing some 70 million U.S. dollars worth of damage. The government said it will look over the measures implemented so far, as well as stipulate further support and fact-finding measures. A recent investigation said that the quake was a man-made disaster that could have been triggered by an experimental geothermal power plant. The three sides also vowed to use the extra cash to create more jobs and help regions designated as crisis zones. I ask for thorough preparations in regards to assistance for the quake. I also hope the government considers extending the designation of industrial crisis zones, which expires this week, to breathe life into these cities so that residents in these areas will still be eligible for subsidies. The exact size of the supplementary budget has yet to be decided, but it's not likely to reach the $8 billion that the IMF had proposed to achieve Seoul's growth target of 2.6 to 2.7 percent for this year. It would be the third extra budget of the Moon Jae-in administration. The details of the extra budget will be decided after close negotiations between the three sides, with the government planning to submit the proposal to the National Assembly in late April. Kim Min-ji, Arirang News. President Moon Jae-in has called for efforts to revamp the country's tourism industry. He says South Korea has great potential in the sector due to the uniqueness of the Korean peninsula and Korean culture. Park Hee-jun has more. President Moon Jae-in says that South Korea can use its recent past to transform itself into its own unique tourist destination. The president was speaking at an annual tourism conference in Incheon on Tuesday. He says tours to the demilitarized zone already attract over 3 million visitors a year and that demand for such tours will only grow as peace settles on the Korean Peninsula. And President Moon said South Korea is also attractive in other ways, one being Korean culture, including K-pop and K-drama. From Gangnam, the theme of Sai's hit title, to Busan and Daegu, the birthplaces of BTS members, President Moon says Korea is a must-visit destination for fans of the Korean wave. And that has led to over 10 percent of the total foreign tourists visiting the country to experience the Hallyu culture. President Moon also emphasized that the country can improve its trade surplus only when it leads the global tourism industry. He said South Korea must upgrade its tourism services by aligning them with mobile information and communications technology 
and hurry to create smart infrastructure that allows visitors to handle transportation, reservations, and payments with only their smartphones. The president also promised to enhance the competence of local cities. In line with such efforts, the culture ministry announced the same day that it will improve regional tour programs with the target of attracting 23 million foreign visitors by 2022. It also plans to increase drops in the field to 960,000 from the current 580,000. Park Hee-jun, Arirang News. Now, staying with the local tourism industry, it has been a big part of the local economy, thanks in part, as we heard, to overseas interest in K-pop and Hallyu. And many visitors have also been showing satisfaction with their visit to Korea. It seems the industry is succeeding in finding new ways to appeal to tourists, but there's more to be done. So we'll bin reports. South Korea's tourism industry has been growing into a new economic engine for the country, drawing in more and more visitors from overseas. According to the Korea Tourism Organization, a total of 1.2 million foreigners came to South Korea in February, up 15 percent from a year earlier. And it seems that they're finding ever more varied reasons to come too. I've never been here before, but I love, I'm a foodie, I love food, like that's literally the first on my list. And after that, obviously, it's a beautiful country in general. I, I like the, the culture, the architecture, uh, the, the fashion, and the people are also really nice. Um, I like um, uh, shopping here. They have like uh, very, very unique stuff. You can't find it any, anywhere else in the world. And also the food, street food is amazing here. With the popularity of Hanyu, South Korea's tourism was driven by K-pop, food, and culture. But recently, as the tourism industry has grown, it has also become more diverse. Recently, tourism has been changing in terms of the reasons people visit Korea. It's becoming diverse in the sense that tourism itself is about finding value. This is becoming a trend right now. Going forward, diversity in South Korea's tourism industry will mean broadening its appeal to new markets. The future of tourism for South Korea is about responding to the market. As our tourism market develops and expands to the Middle East and to ASEAN countries, the future will be about building a new culture. That's something that will contribute positively to South Korea's economy. Sobobin, Arirang News. Turning to local politics now, and President Moon Jae-in has proceeded with the appointment of two new cabinet ministers. At the same time, he's asking Parliament to adopt reports on the confirmation hearings of three others so their appointments can go ahead. The presidential office said Tuesday evening that the president asked for the reports to be approved by Sunday at the latest. Those reports would apply to Kim yeon Chol for Minister of Unification, Park yeon yong Son for SMEs and Startups Minister and Chin Young for Interior and Safety Minister. The opposition parties have called for their nominations to be withdrawn, calling them unqualified, and they've warned that they will not cooperate in Parliament unless the president pulls them out. Approved already are Culture Minister Park Yang-woo and Oceans Minister Moon Sung-hyuk, Sung whose terms will begin on Wednesday. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has voiced hope that the leaders of North Korea and the U.S. will meet again soon to resume talks, while making clear that sanctions will help speed up the North's denuclearization. E.G. One has more. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has reiterated that it's difficult to put a timeline on North Korea's denuclearization, explaining that talks with the regime are often, quote, one step forward, one step back. During an interview with a Pennsylvania radio station, which aired on Monday, Pompeo noted President Donald Trump's words that there is no timeline in resolving North Korea's denuclearization. But he added that the regime is not doing great under the current sanctions and that the sanctions will speed up the denuclearization timeline. Pompeo also indicated he was hopeful President Trump and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un would meet again in the coming months to achieve a substantial step along the path to denuclearization. He added that Pyongyang would be able to enjoy a brighter future once such measures are taken. The two sides have been at a standstill, with North Korea saying it wanted a gradual rollback of its nuclear program in exchange for the partial removal of sanctions at each step. 
while the U.S. is asking Pyongyang to take concrete denuclearization steps and provide an overall roadmap in exchange for sanctions relief. Meanwhile, Washington's cooperation with its allies on the matter continues, with Seoul and Washington's foreign ministers meeting last week. The State Department said Monday that the two ministers discussed coordinated efforts to achieve the final fully verified denuclearization of North Korea, as well as updating each other on respective engagements with the North. Praising the enduring strength of their alliance, the two sides also share their commitment on trilateral cooperation with Japan and on their economic ambitions in the Indo-Pacific region. Lee Ji-won, Arirang News. The defense chiefs of South Korea and the United States have reaffirmed the Allies' defense posture on the Korean Peninsula following a face-to-face -face meeting in Washington. Kim ji has the details. Washington's acting defense chief has hailed the recently concluded Dongmengdring military exercise between South Korea and the U.S. as a big success, adding lessons were learned that could be applied in drills set for September. Patrick Shanahan made the remarks after his meeting on Monday with visiting South Korean Defense Minister Chung kyung doo at the Pentagon. I don't think we're scaling back exercises. I think we're uh, building capability. We want to make sure that there are no gaps or seams and that we continue to build on these exercises. We're going to talk about the September exercises and the lessons learned from uh, these ones in March. Chung also said the drill was successful, adding it was an opportunity to test the eventual transfer of wartime operational control from the U.S. to South Korea. Seoul's defense ministry also said the two allies agreed that the comprehensive military agreement signed by the two Koreas last year has helped alleviate military tensions on the Korean peninsula and will continue to support efforts to carry out the inter-Korean agreement. The agreement could serve as an exemplary case to militarily support Seoul and Washington's diplomatic efforts for the complete denuclearization of North Korea. The face-to-face -face meeting between the defense chiefs is seen as an effort to dispel concerns that a downsized joint military exercise aimed at not angering North Korea has no impact in the Allies' defense posture, even as denuclearization talks hang in the balance after the Hanoi summit. Uh, North Korea stopped the testing of nuclear missiles and we stopped the joint military exercises. But if the process of denuclearization doesn't evolve in the future anymore, then why do we uh, just uh, stop and, and, and resume the joint military exercises? I think that's something that has to follow through. The Uche Freedom Guardian joint drill usually held in August every year is to be replaced by the Tongming exercise planned for the latter half of this year. Kim ji Adina News. Meanwhile, U.S. Marine Forces Pacific Commander Louis A. Craparotta has also reaffirmed what he called the ironclad South Korea-United States alliance. First, of course, the value of the uh, alliance will never change. In the Marine Corps, our relationship, the United States Marines and Iraq Marines, is a cornerstone of that uh, relationship. Speaking at a Marine Symposium that commemorated the 70th anniversary of the South Korean Marine Corps Foundation on Tuesday, Lieutenant General Craparotta underscored the importance of maintaining the ability of both allies' Marine forces to support diplomacy on the Korean Peninsula. He added that both sides should now focus on achieving the capability to implement the transition of wartime operational control. Meanwhile, South Korea and the United States have recently launched a special committee to speed up the envisioned transfer of wartime operational control. Seoul's Defense Ministry said Tuesday that the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Park han gi and the Commander of the U.S. Forces Korea, uh, General Robert Abrams, led the first meeting of the Special Permanent Military Committee in March. The generals are expected to meet on a monthly basis to evaluate the South Korean military's core capabilities against the preconditions for the OPCON transfer. In the latter half of this year, the Allies plan to do an initial evaluation of South Korea's operational capability. If Seoul passes, its full operational and mission capabilities will be tested in the following years. 
South Korea is preparing to hold inter-Korean video reunions for families separated by the Korean War. Seoul's Unification Ministry says the government will start renovating 13 facilities across South Korea on Wednesday that will be used for the events. The work is expected to end uh, later this month. Regarding those in the north, Seoul says related ministries are discussing the matter. Seoul received sanctions waivers to renovate North Korean facilities and deliver necessary items across the inter-Korean border through its bilateral working group meeting with the US last month. However, the date for the video reunions is yet to be announced. Turning now to the local economy again, the rate of increase of Korea's consumer price index slowed again last month on the back of low vegetable and oil prices. Kim Dami has the details. Korea's consumer prices for March increased at their slowest pace since July 2016. According to Statistics Korea on Tuesday, consumer prices edged up 0.4 percent on year last month. This marks the third straight month that the Consumer Price Index has seen an increase of less than 1 percent compared to the previous year. As for the first quarter of the year as a whole, the index rose by 0.5, its smallest increase since 1965. The main reasons behind such lower consumer price increases are lower vegetable prices and a fall in petrochemical product prices. Petrochemical goods prices dropped near 10 percent on-year in March amid low oil prices, while vegetable prices plunged by nearly 13 percent on-year thanks to relatively good weather. Core inflation, which excludes food and energy prices, rose 0.8 percent compared to the previous year, and prices of services increased 1.1 percent. The government says it will push through with its efforts to stabilize the prices of products that have seen large price fluctuations. Kim Dabi, Arirang News. Recent data shows both the quality and quantity of employment worsened in Korea last year, with the employment rate falling for first time in almost a decade. Arirang's senior economics correspondent Kim Hesang for us tonight. Employment rate in the country has fallen for the first time in nine years. According to the Korea Economic Research Institute, employment rate, the ratio of the employed to working age population aged 15 and over, dropped 0.1 percentage points to 60.7 percent in 2018 from the previous year. In particular, employment rate of those in their 40s and 50s dropped sharply by 0.4 and 0.1 percentage points. Around 97,000 new jobs were added last year. By industry, jobs in manufacturing and education services dropped 56,000 to 60,000, respectively. Those in health and social welfare services went up 125,000, and agriculture sector went up 62,000. The number of manufacturing sector jobs decreased due to struggling auto and shipbuilding industries. Most jobs created as of recent were in the public sector. And the income for these jobs are lower than the nation's total industry average wages. So overall, quality of jobs last year worsened. Given that those in their 40s and 50s account for around 40 percent of Korea's population over age 15 and are the main caregivers of their families, experts warned the current trend could hurt household consumption in the country. While employment rate has dropped, unemployment rate went up 0.1 percentage points to 3.8 percent in 2018. The report said unless more jobs are created in the private sector, the employment market for this year will likely stay sluggish. Kim Hye-sung, Arirang News. Korea's national liability, which is the sum of the nation's debt and its future spending, rose to a record high last year. According to the finance ministry, the nation's liabilities reached 1.4 trillion U.S. dollars, up 111.6 billion dollars on year. The ministry attributed the rise to the cost of pensions for public servants and the military. The nation's sovereign debt rose to $598 billion, up $18 billion from the previous year. That figure accounted for more than 30 percent of the nation's GDP, the same as the year before. Meanwhile, Korea's state assets amounted to about $1.9 trillion, with net assets standing at $388 billion. 
Competition for jobs at Korea's biggest companies is notoriously intense. Some might wonder what kind of salaries they're competing for. A survey finds the highest paying companies are in the oil refinery business and finance. Our Ko Ryun Hee has the details. The average salary at 13 firms among South Korea's top 100 companies based on market capitalization marked around 88,000 U.S. dollars last year. This is according to a survey released on Tuesday by online job search portal Job Korea. It said the analysis was based on 80 firms among the 100. Companies in the oil refinery and finance industry made up the top spots. As oil corporation, a petroleum and refinery company paid the most, with its average salary coming in at around $121,000. Merit Securities was second with around $119,000. A global energy and chemical company, SK Innovation, was third. Samsung Electronics was sixth, with the average of 105000 The report also showed a gender disparity when it came to pay. Men received an extra $28,000 on average last year compared to women. A separate report by Job Korea released last December showed that job seekers are most interested in the salary they can receive when choosing a job. Around 1,200 university students were surveyed on what companies they want to work for among the 100 top firms by sales. The most popular reasons to work for specific companies were the size of salary, extra benefits, working environment, and the firm's image. Koruni, Arirang News. Another of the Korean women sexually enslaved by Japan during World War II has died. According to a Korean NGO that advocates for the rights of the surviving victims, the woman died this past Sunday. At the request of her family, though, her name, age and funeral details were not released. This marks the fourth death of the so-called comfort women this year alone. Of the 240 registered with the government, only 21 are still alive, most of them in their 90s. Estimates of the number of Korean women enslaved by the Japanese military reach into the hundreds of thousands. The police have booked the grandsons of the founders of two of Korea's biggest companies for allegedly buying and using marijuana. One is Choi Young Kun, grandson of SK Group founder Choi Jong Kun. He was arrested on Monday at the office of an SK affiliate for allegedly buying liquid marijuana between last March and May. While investigating him, they found evidence that a grandson of Hyundai Group founder Jung Joo Young had bought from the same dealer. His name hasn't been released, but he's understood to be 28 years old and living abroad. The police say they'll arrest him when he returns. Their suspected dealer has already been arrested. Times Square, the bustling heart of New York City, is known for its Broadway theaters, cinemas, and the New Year's Eve ball drop. But maybe for a short period of time, people can also get a little taste of Korea's cultural heritage. Our Won Jung Hwan shows us how. South Korea's cultural heritage is on the show in the city of New York. LG Electronics said on Tuesday that it has been airing advertising videos introducing one of the UNESCO World Heritage Sites in Korea on its electronic billboard in Times Square. In collaboration with the Cultural Heritage Administration, a promotional video on Korea's Buddhist mountain temples has been airing about 120 times a day since March 27 to let the world see the country's beautiful culture and heritage. Korea's Buddhist mountain temples, also known as Sansa, are a living Buddhist heritage that preserves and carries on Korea's cultural traditions. Sansa, which are located throughout the southern provinces of Korea, were added to UNESCO's World Heritage List last summer, joining 12 other Korean sites already on the list. LG Electronics has been using its electronic billboards, including the one at Piccadilly Circus in London, to promote Korean cultural sites and assets since 2015. Times Square sees an estimated 1.5 million footfalls a day, and LG hopes that presenting the video in the world's most bustling areas will not only introduce Korea's cultural assets, but also help attract more tourists to Korea. Won Jong-hwan, Arirang News.
We're just a day away from the April 3rd parliamentary by-elections with official campaigning to end in a few hours' time at midnight. The districts are for grabs on the country's southeast, Changwon Songsan and Tongyang Kosong in Gyeongsang Namdo province. The vote will serve as a barometer of public sentiment in the traditionally conservative province ahead of next year's general elections. Polling stations will open between 6 a.m. and 8 p.m. Korea time. Korea's leading chip makers, Samsung Electronics and SK Hynix, spent a record amount on research and development last year. Samsung said it invested almost 17 billion US dollars on R&D in 2018, up 11 percent from a year earlier, while SK Hynix spent almost 3 billion dollars. Both firms said their R&D focused on DRAM chips as well as new products. Superfast 5G mobile networks in Korea seem to be gaining public interest. A local research agency says more than 63% of the 1,000 adults it surveyed said they were interested in the technology. About half of those respondents said they would even be willing to replace their phones to use 5G. The respondents said they're most looking forward to high-speed connections and ultra-high-definition videos. To welcome the arrival of spring, the Korean government is offering a variety of short getaways as part of its Spring Travel Week. The Culture Ministry is inviting people to take part in one of five themed group tours, including villages in Korea's peaceful countryside. Those who'd like to go just need to register online, explaining why they should be selected for the travel programs. The 2019 Spring Travel Week will run from April 27th to May 12th. That's your three-minute news flash. News in depth coming up next. Big announcements were made on South Korea's economic front. The ruling party government and the presidential office have agreed on a supplementary budget which will be submitted to the parliament within this month. While a 52-hour maximum work week system came into force as of Monday, April 1st. Today, we look into the hopes and concerns of these two developments, as well as other hot economic issues at home and abroad. For that, we're joined by Professor of Pan-Pacific International Studies, Shin sang Hyup at Gyeonghee University. It's always good to have you with us. Thank you. So the South Korean government will draw up a supplementary budget and mm. submit it to the parliament within this month. And the IMF, I don't know if you remember, right. has yeah. also suggested mm. South Korea to come up with an extra budget to support its growth. Right. Now, the exact amount is yet to be finalized, but do you agree on the need for a supplementary budget? I think so. Uh, considering um, economic uh, circumstances facing the Korean economy, um, I mean, uh, it's not very favorable at the moment. As you know very well, trade war between the uh, USA and China is going on. And then how about the domestic economy? Domestic e economy in Korea has been slowing down, slowed down. So to revitalize the Korean economy, I think the, the government should have to use some of uh, the uh, physical policies. Physical policies means all policies affecting the government spending and government income. Uh, by increasing the, uh, the budget, well, that means that the more money will go to the market. And if the uh, more money will go to the market, then the industries could have more chances to make more money. If they can make more money, they can give more money I mean, in the, in the form of salaries to the uh, workers. And if the workers could get in more money, they can spend more money in the market, then the money will, more money will go to the private sector and industries. This is the uh, positive circle in the economy. So uh, the government, through the physical policy, I mean, increasing the, uh, um, the budget, uh, they can uh, start uh, to uh, revitalize the uh, slow, sluggish economy in Korea. So in this context, definitely those kind of the uh, measures should be needed. Now, the core focus of the supplementary budget is tackling fine dust pollution, but mm. a big chunk of that money will also be used to revitalize the nation's slumping exports and investments. Right. Do you think an injection of extra money will help boost these sectors? I think so. I think so. As I already uh, explained very briefly, um, through the physical policy, um, the government can, I mean, hope to revitalize the uh, sluggish economy. That means if the uh, sell, I mean, industries could make more money, income, they will consider making a foreign direct investment, I mean, increase their investment to uh, be, make the activities be more, I mean, active. 
Um, so I think the, uh, our, uh, the uh, uh, increase the uh, budget can be a kind of some turning point in changing the economic environments. That means that they, they can be the, one of the best ways for the government to increase the uh, Korean exports and to increase the Korean forms of foreign direct investment on uh, foreign countries. So a very positive outlook yes. on the supplementary budget. Mm -hmm. Now staying with exports, South Korea's exports fell 8% in March compared to, compared to last year, the same month last year. And that was a decline <coughs> for four consecutive right. months. Mm -hmm. Now the main reason cited are slumping semiconductor prices and slowing Chinese right. economy. How do you assess Korea's current exports? Well, since last December, I mean 2018, the Korean exports has been declined consecutively uh, for, uh, for four months. I think the situation uh, seems to be a little bit uh, serious than we thought because the, uh, this kind of situation is the first since the, uh, uh, July 2016. And the uh, one thing which I'm really concerned about at the moment is the unfavorable global uh, the economic environments, uh, of course, which, which can be uh, uh, the characterized by the trade war between China and USA, which is the number one economy and number two economy in the world. And the, considering um, the economic structure, Korean economic structure, which is heavily rely on external trade, exports seems to be very important for us to maintain the sustainability in our economic development. But as I mentioned before, uh, two uh, big economic giants in the world, they are also at the same time two major trading partners for Korea. So for Korea, which is heavily rely on exports, the uh, trade war between two countries seems to be a very, very serious negative impact on the Korean economy. Another one is the uh, slow down, slowing Korean domestic economy. I mean, uh, just before we saw the, some make, macroeconomic indexes telling the conditions of the Korean economy at the moment. Well, I mean, the domestic uh, economy has been slowed down over the last seven months. So in this context, I think the, uh, uh, we have to make every effort to revitalize the Korean economy. And then, well, physical policy can be uh, used by the Korean government to revitalize it. But anyway, uh, to, to make a long story short, the situation facing the Korean economy seems to be uh, serious, I think more serious than we thought. Mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, shifting gears to 52-hour maximum work week system, which went into effect as of Monday, April 1st, mm -hmm. how do you assess the effects of it so far? And what are some of the remaining problems mm -hmm. that need to be addressed in order for us to achieve a soft landing of the system? All right. Well, like the coin, which have two sides. I mean, it, it gives us some positive effects on the uh, people's life the worker's life, because um, the, what is the contents of the 52-hour uh, maximum uh, work week system? That means that every year, every day, uh, they, they do work about the uh, 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 eight hours. Mm -hmm. um, and then the extra, I mean, they can extra, they can do uh, 12, time, 12 hours extra time. So the people and workers could have the, their own life night life <laughs> and then they could have more spend and spend more time with their families this can be the positive aspect of the this system mm -hmm. but the uh, other side of the coin i mean the negative aspects of this system is this well the um, you know uh, uh, the, to maintain the dynamism in korean economy we need more contribution of small and medium sized companies as we know very well the korean economy has been uh, i mean been developed mainly by the contribution of large size companies. But right now we need to get more contribution of small and medium sized companies. But the, uh, this system can be a uh, I mean, uh, problem, I mean some difficulties to the small and medium sized co companies at the moment. Why? Because um, the uh, uh, financial conditions, I mean, well in other words, big, large size companies have more money than small and medium sized companies. Uh, if the worker can uh, work at maximum, I mean, uh, 52 hours per week, uh, they should hire new employees if they have more jobs to do. Well, as I already explained, 
uh, the large size companies have money to uh, hire more people, but how about the uh, situations uh, small and medium sized companies have? They do not have um, much money as I mean money as many as much as the uh, large size companies right. have. So this kind of things make, make um, I mean make, seems to make uh, small and medium sized companies to have some more difficulties in doing their business activities. This can be one of the uh, very important uh, remaining a kind of some tasks the government should have to find a solution. I mean, this will be very important to maintain the uh, sustainable, I mean, sustainability in the Korean economic development. So work and life balance is important, mm. but we should also remember that contributions right. of the small and mid-sized firms are very important mm -hmm. to our economy. Now, the operating profit of South Korea's top companies, including Samsung Electronics, mm -hmm. are expected to be announced this week. And the first quarter operating profit of listed firms are expected to shrink by one third. Mm. What do you think are some reasons behind this slump? Well, the uh, I already explained partially um, the, uh, but you know, uh, the China has been the number one destination of Korean exports. Roughly 26 percent out of total Korean exports uh, go to uh, the China. But very recently, according to the uh, the data, the Korean exports to China reduced by 15.5 percent. Um, and just uh, when you compare the total Korean exports to China last March, I mean, compared to the same uh, I mean period uh, last year, what the, what this tell to us? That means that the our exports has been very uh, shrinked very much, uh, particularly in the trade with the uh, China. And the, also, the one thing we have to concern about is that the, uh, our, the price, I mean, semiconductor prices went down very, I mean, declined dramatically over the very short, I mean, time period. Uh, last March, the uh, our semiconductor prices uh, dropped was dropped by 15.6% uh, comparing to the same period last year. So on the part of the Korean economy, we have problem and difficulties in exporting our products and the, uh, the quantity wise, but the price of the semiconductor I mean, products, which has been the one of the most important items of products for the Korean economy has been declined dramatically. So we can say that the Korean economy is right now facing the serious difficulties, I mean, uh, I mean, which is very, very uh, serious for the Korean economy. So in this context, I think the, uh, uh, the Korean government should make some efforts. I mean, so the Korean government, I mean, particularly President Moon Jae-in, has announced the so-called New Southern Policy, New Northern Policy, which is an effort to diversify our trading relations. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Then the, by diversifying the relations, trade relations with many uh, countries, well, we could minimize the uh, negative economic uh, impact caused by trade war between China and USA and the uh, unfavorable global trading or economic circumstances. Now moving to <clears throat> Brexit, with just 11 days to go until Britain is scheduled <clears throat> to leave the EU, Britain's parliament rejected for the fourth time right. all indicative motions. <clears throat> now. EU is reportedly already preparing for a no-deal right. Brexit. Mm -hmm. How would a no-deal Brexit affect the South Korean economy and what kind of countermeasures do we need to prepare <clears throat> to avert worst-case scenarios? Well, on the short-term basis, we could not avoid get some negative impact from Brexit. I mean, Korean economy will have negative impact, uh, particularly in financial market, because in London has been one of the three uh, global financial centers so the, uh, our, the Brexit will uh, give some direct threats to the Korean financial market. But on the mid or long term basis, I think our, well, the uh, negative impact caused by Brexit uh, against Korea economy will be very minimal because that on the part of the European Union, <coughs> excuse me, Korea is a country uh, with the big, uh, I mean, economies such as China and Japan as a neighboring country. So if I use some economic uh, jargon, there, is, there must be some strong trade diversion effects. 
So instead of having a trade with U UK, they can uh, choose uh, Korea as a new trading partner. That means there must be some more chances for the Korean economy to increase or strengthen trade relations with the European Union. I thought this can be, uh, I, mean, uh, I mean, quite a rough analysis, but anyway, um, I think at the moment uh, it will be the case, I think. But then what kind of efforts the Korean government should make? I mean, and at the time, I mean, on the short-term basis, well, EU, I mean, UK is not very important trading partner, but it is quite an important partner for the Korean economy. So, well, for the uh, no-deal Brexit, we have to uh, uh, make every effort to start and finalizing the FTA talks with the uh, UK. Because UK has been uh, the main gate entering into the EU market. If uh, the UK uh, leave from the uh, European Union, then definitely uh, we have to uh, find another uh, the platform to enter into the European Union market. But anyway, in considering all those kind of the uh, new changes facing us, then we have to make every effort to stabilize trade relationship with the uh, Europe, I mean UK through the FTA negotiation with them. At the same time, we have to prepare any some possible damages caused by the Brexit. For example, safeguard measures about the steel products, you know, to maintain our, I mean, the, uh, uh, the current status in the trade with the European Union and the UK. We have to prepare the uh, uh, the possible the damages caused by the Brexit, particularly as I said before, uh, for the uh, industries such as the steel uh, industries. I'm afraid that is all the time we have for you today. Thank you so much for sharing. My your pleasure. Insights. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Now it's that time in the newscast where we take a look at some of the digital media content available on Arirang's website. And today we have another edition of Onni News where our very own reporters look into the latest social and economic trends. Yes, and in today's episode, our very own Son Young dives into some discrimination scandals surrounding a German retailer and a gay conversion app as well as a possible re-denomination of Korea's currency. Take a look. everyone, I am Eun Kyung, a news reporter at Arirang TV. Here's today's on news. I got Huon Vakt. This tweet by a Korean student in Germany has created a stir worldwide, prompting more than 13,000 people to sign a petition against Huon Bak, a German DIY store chain. This controversial German ad showed an Asian woman buying sweaty clothes worn by a white man and getting aroused. <laughs> Many people, especially Asian women, are calling it sexist and racist, demanding an apology from a German firm and the removal of the ad. The company refuted the allegation by tweeting the ad was not racist and only meant to show the decreasing quality of life in cities not targeting Asian people. Well, as for me personally, I'm not that convinced. What do you think? Have you ever seen a gay conversion therapy app on the Google Play Store? It's an app which claims to help gay people change their sexuality through psychological and spiritual intervention created by a Christian group, Living Hope Ministries. In protest, human rights campaign, a civic rights organization dropped Google from its annual corporate equality index, which evaluates how well companies support their employees for sexual minorities. In addition, another LGBT organization has signed a petition at the world's largest petition platform calling on the tech giant to remove the app. Facing severe backlash, Google has become the latest App Store, followed by Apple Store and Amazon App Store, to remove the app from purchase. 
In response, Living Hope claims that it does not promote nor recommend conversion therapy, but is only trying to help gay people who feel conflicted about their sexuality. Redenomination is back on the table again in more than a decade. Lee joo the governor of the Bank of Korea, has raised the possibility of redenominating Korea One on March 25th. Redenomination is a process of changing the face value of a country's currency. If a currency's face value is reduced from 1,000 to 1, a 5,000 Korean won Starbucks Americano can be bought at 5 won instead. Proponents say, considering the growing size of economy and financial transaction, it will be convenient to abbreviate the unit of its currency. They also say South Korea is the only country in the OECD whose currency is exchanged in the thousands per US dollar. However, many people remain cautious, saying it could result in inflationary pressure and economic uncertainties. If the move goes ahead, it would be the greatest milestone for the local currency since 1962, the last time the Korean won was redenominated. That's all for today, and we have another Only coming in Friday, so don't forget to subscribe and like this video. See you next time. Bye bye! It's quite windy and chilly, but if being cold implies no fine dust and clean air, I certainly don't mind keep wearing my winter jacket for a couple more weeks. That's right, and I'm sure uh, many in Korea would agree with you, me included. For the latest weather updates, let's turn to our Michelle Park at the Weather Center for us. Michelle, what do you have for us today? Well, good evening. Dust-free air is expected to continue at least until Thursday, along with some cool conditions. And except for the few afternoon clouds over in Tokyo, it's going to be a sunny one for all regions in Northeast Asia. And the nation will wake up to chillier than seasonal average readings. As Hor kicks off Wednesday at 2 degrees Celsius, Chuncheon will be freezing cold at minus 2, Busan and Jeju are milder at 5 and 8 degrees respectively. And although the mercury continues to rise into the teens, wind chill factor will make you feel colder than the actual readings. Seoul's high will peak up to 12 degrees, while Daegu and Gyeongju hit 16 and 17 degrees respectively. Temperatures will bounce back to the seasonal average on Thursday, with Seoul soaring up to 15 degrees. And from then on, the mercury will constantly rise until we get another spring shower on Sunday. I'll leave you with the weather conditions around the world. And that wraps up this edition of Arirang News. Thank you as always for watching. We'll be back same time tomorrow, so stay tuned.